Hey guys, Thomas Cecilia Jr. here, aka Buzz Touch Tom, here to review Disney's live action Milan. If you end up enjoying it, please consider like, commenting, and subscribing. Also, check out the description. The second link will link you over to my Patreon page. Any uh, support is desperately needed. And with that, let's get into Disney's live action Milan. Now, before I can get into it, I want to say that I have seen uh, the controversy surrounding this movie ever since its inception, ever since its announcement. Negative after negative uh, things have been stated about what the actress believes in, from that to where they filmed the movie, to all this stuff, and, you know, you can uh, detract away from this movie from those elements if you so wish. That is not my prerogative here. My prerogative is to review this movie and just this movie, not the not what the actors or actresses do or support or whatever. I'm here to review Disney's live action Milan uh all faults and or good things aside or uh included, I should say. So Here's the thing, is that I think I'm actually with a lot of people in saying that seeing a current readaption of Mulan in live action was probably, in all consideration, probably one of the more easier picks to do a live action adaptation for. Um, which is so odd that it came so late in the cycle of Disney's live-action adaptations, most of which have been awful uh, in other respects. Um, I really actually can't think of any good ones off the top of my head, uh, except for probably the earlier live-action, like um, 101 Dalmatians, like the original version. Uh, outside of that, I don't think I can think of one that like reaches like a one that can say oh you should actually like watch this movie and unfortunately I am here to say that Mulan is here to join that list again just as the movie alone not anything outside of that I'm here to try to objectively look at just what's in the movie and review that and that alone so for those of you who don't know, Mulan is, of course, a story that's actually been told way before, and Disney made a, a animated version a while back, and it's among one of the more liked Disney movies, I would like to thank. Um, it was a musical, had a bit of comedy, um, and here's the thing, and I think I've said this before, I think... Uh, other than this being a live ad adaptation that makes the most sense, I think Mulan is one of the mo movies that I actually struggle with the most in terms of original Disney movies. Because there are a lot of parts of that movie I like, but there are equally just as many parts in the original. Looking back at them now, I just don't like them anymore. The comedy in particular just never felt that strong to me, and it never felt like it really fit in this movie, uh, especially for what the story they were trying to tell was, this war. Uh, I get a little bit of comedy, but Mushu definitely was a character that felt like its purpose was to distract children. I'm just gonna be blunt about it and say that that's kind of what I feel like. And then to like make adults laugh at some of the other jokes that come from Wushu, but very few, I, probably one, or maybe, I think, uh, if I'm being accurate to what I can remember from the original Mulan. But here's the thing is that I feel like this story uh, could tell a more, more uh, interesting, engaging, more adult story while still appealing to children. I think that is possible. Uh, and hell, there's a video game currently that I think does this exact thing to, well, well, okay, maybe not for kids, but 
Granted, it's still a better look at history and does a better job of doing that aspect, and that's Ghost of Tsushima. If you ever wanted to look at a game that looks at history and really tells a story in a very fascinating way, then definitely check out that game, but that is in Japan, this is a China-based story, so uh, that is an aside, more or less. At any rate, for Milan, I can understand the need or want, wanting to see a more uh, grounded version of Milan. I think that actually fits, uh, and I know that sounds odd to say, uh, considering that, again, this movie, the original animated version, had a, a lot of comedy, had a, you know, but it also had a lot of other elements to it outside of the comedy. And again, I feel like, you know, they removed the comedy completely from this movie, which I actually, I don't have a problem with that. I know some people do, and I get that, and, and you know, comedy to me has a more subjective nature, like, it's really hard to gauge where comedy lies on an objective me me meter, uh, only because what makes certain people laugh and what makes other people laugh, the variety in that is a lot harder to gauge, I feel. Um, but I think there, there are certain elements that can definitely work uh, in terms of comedy, but still, uh, nonetheless... Uh, so, I was ready for a more grounded Mulan, and when they announced that there wasn't going to be any music, I was like, okay, sure, I don't mind that also being a choice. Uh, again, I don't mind the music either staying or being removed. I really don't mind either or, as long as something is there to replace it. That is the key of what Mulan is missing in this movie. This adaptation anyway, is that with the removal of the music and the comedy, there's no good replacement for these elements that they have removed. They removed these elements, but they did not replace those elements with anything interesting enough or engaging enough to ground it well enough to make it stand out in a good way. So anyways, now that that little preamble is done, let's get down to business and talk about the actual meat of the story. And it's not too different from the original. There's one extremely new added element, and it's even in the trailers, the witch character, uh, which oddly, to be fair, is the most interesting part of the movie, if I'm going to be completely honest. And even with that being the most interesting new added character, I feel like she still got downplayed. So that should tell you everything you need to know about this movie. That the new character they introduced who had the most engaging and interesting story out of everyone still felt a little bit too hollow. Like, they felt the, the bridge between the beginning and the, and the end, somewhere in the middle, her character got a little bit lost and... I felt uh, in her transition from what she goes through. Uh, anyway, uh, so Milan starts off uh, with her as a young child. Uh, she's chasing a chicken around town, uh, and all the people are like, ah, you know. Uh, she eventually gets it inside, and she uses something called chi. Now, this is, of course, a new element introduced in this movie. No, Chi is not a new thing. Uh, chi, of course, is uh, equivalent to energy. Uh, or, you know, power from within. And of course, this marks another issue with the movie, is that this Chi does make the character have, or seem to have, no flaws. Uh, typical behavior of what people refer to as a Mary Sue, or, well, probably now a Rey Skywalker, to be fair. Uh, a character who is given too many good qualities without any negative qualities to balance them out. Uh, 
And here's the thing about that, is that there were small hints of them trying to, you know, little hints in the movie where I felt like they could have pushed a little bit further to, like, see, be like, there is something there. Trust us, there's something there. Uh, like, when she's chasing the chicken around, um, you know, she seems to be lively and energetic, at least in that moment. So there seems, again, there was a hint of something there. But then it's removed instantly, um, and again, when there are hints of elements, they're quickly and often far too easily removed in the movie, and that doesn't give us any true quality to who the character is. Uh, it's more of a, this character is this in this moment, um, and I don't feel like that is strong enough to make a good character. And again, that is something I think that is fair to point out. Uh, again, there's another scene where when they're walking to the matchmaker, uh, and she has the face paint on, uh, which they painstakingly show in this version instead of, you know, well, it's a bit of more of a montage in the original, but still. Um, when she has the, uh, the face paint on, she's like, oh, you can't tell what my emotions are. And she says all these emotions, and then this, her and her, this new character, her sister, uh, have a laugh over it, and it, it does, unfortunately, lend itself to, I don't think that that was meant for an American audience to understand <laughs> moment. And it's odd that that's the only moment that I can think of, well, that really stands out of, like, huh... I mean, you probably could have told the actress to try to emote a little bit more, but I don't know. I, I probably haven't seen enough Chinese movies um, in terms of acting quality, so it's hard to gauge of, like, you know, I've probably seen too many American movies at this point where, you know, emoting is more typically seen as something that's a positive uh, and I don't know, there's something, I, I don't know if this is a Chinese thing, I could be wrong, uh, to try to withstill that, be a bit more stoic in your performance, um, and I feel like that can, that blend between Japanese and Chinese as well, at least in, like, uh, certain performances, not in anime, that's for sure, uh, <laughs> That is, like, the exception to the rule where, like, everyone in anime is overdoing it and, like, really overselling it when they're the good performances. Uh, but anyways, uh, so, again, there are moments and little hints of, like, oh, they're trying to do something here, but then they immediately drop the ball. Uh, I will say, and I can agree, that the sister character is an unneeded character add-on. Uh, she's there exclusively to ruin the the matchmaking scene. Originally, it was all on Mulan. She was given all the stuff. She was given the lucky cricket in the original. She was, you know, over-prepared and rushed. She had the handwriting to show that, you know, she wasn't fully prepared. You know, it showed a little bit more of her weakness, which is, again, that character moment that is missing in this uh, this version. You know, you have Mulan in this version, uh, the live-action version, actually set up to do it almost properly and have the sister make the mistake, but have Mulan take the fall for the mistake. Uh, which, again, makes Mulan have a positive quality rather than a negative quality. And again, that doesn't... that's not good early setup for a character because now there's nowhere to grow there's nowhere to proceed where we can say oh the character went through this type of journey in fact this movie seems to almost imply that the journey is to not make one at all like i hate to be the person that says this but out of every moral in theme that there's that there is out there the one that I have the biggest issue now with at least in current media is the whole be yourself thing because I think a lot of people take that the wrong way 
in terms of once you hear the phrase be yourself, it almost seems to exclude the ability to grow as a person. And I feel like that's something that's heavily missing in current movies a lot these days, is that when you hear the message explicitly, be yourself, it's always in lieu of, but grow as a person, too. You know, if you have flaws, work on them. That is what is to be human. You know, you want to become a better person uh, because every person is flawed to an extent, at least realistic people. And when we see betrayals of people like characters like Milan in this live action version and we see them be born perfect uh, and the route is actually when she takes on the disguise, that's apparently when she... Uh, gets all of her character flaws, quote-unquote character flaws, and then uh, proceeds to remove the armor, and then she's perfect again. Uh, again, that sort of, to me, again, rings of a message of be the way you are, but don't work at being better as an individual. Again, it's a message that I feel it has a lot harder, harder over time uh, being explained in movies these days, especially when you exclude the second part of that theme, because I feel like that second part of the theme is usually missing now. And again, that's that growth as a person, and that's something that I feel like is extremely missing, especially in this version of Mulan. So yes, she goes through the matchmaking machine, and then from uh, there, it sort of just skips, uh, which is another bad part of the movie. Uh, we sort of skip from just her taking the, um, the matchmaking scene and failing at it because of her sister, to, oh, now the army is here to recruit men because we've seen the... Yes, they are literally called Ronins. I'm not making that up. I wish I was. And if you heard the other reviewers who reviewed this movie uh, go through it, yes, that is accurate. They are not called um, Mongols. They're called Ro Ro Rorins, is the name officially, uh, which is the dumbest decision I can think of. Why would... Why is that even necessary? It doesn't... It doesn't make sense in any regard. I mean, was that supposed to appeal to China? Like... I'm sorry, but, like... That history is so old, like... I think you can talk about it. I mean... It was in the original Mulan. They were called the Mongols. I think it's okay to still call them Mongols. Because that is what they are supposed to be. Mongols. I, I don't understand this choice whatsoever. I don't know. What, I don't understand what Disney was thinking on that one. Honestly. And the writers on that one. I feel like that was more of a Disney decision. I feel it. But I don't know for sure. Um, and it's. Again. It is so baffling. Uh, definitely the more odd decision. Um. We're introduced to our one of our villains uh, at that point earlier when they're beginning their invasion. Uh, we see them uh, before the uh, the people uh, recruit. Uh, the Mongols move in and like take over other territories, which you know history. So yeah. uh, they also have their witch, which again is that new character that I mentioned. Uh, she's working with the Mongols. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to call them Mongols because uh, why? It's too stupid to refer to them as their other name and I'm just not in the mood to say that again. Um, so, anyway. Uh, so they're taking over. People are uh, recruited. Milan, of course, sees that her father is weakened in a weakened state or older state, is not able to 
fight to the fullest capacity and they didn't have any sons and, you know, there's the whole, uh, do that again. So, uh, she suits up and it skips to her just being in the suit, which again, more missed content, which, again, when you remove content, it is expected that you should replace it with something as equally as good and not just leave it out and do nothing instead. But that's what this movie does constantly, especially in the beginning half of the movie, is that they remove all this much needed content to tell you who Milan is, what type of character she is, what her struggle is, all of these elements are introduced in the first half of the movie, which is what makes the second half of the movie work. That is the bridge between the first half of Mulan and the second half of Mulan, the original animated movie. In this instance, you have a character who is now, uh, you know, flawless, uh, rushing into, uh, getting into the battle, uh, her putting on the uniform is apparently when she takes on the flaw because lying about who you are is the bad thing to do. Even though later on in the movie, yes, I saw it myself and other reviewers pointed this out, she was protected from the armor that apparently weakened her. Which again, I feel muddles the point of the movie a lot. Um... But anyways, she gets into the camp and she meets uh, these two new characters, the humanized cricket shrug. I don't know why they would do that. Uh, they also introduce uh, Mulan's love interest, uh, not the commander Shu, but this new guy, one of just a fellow uh, soldier. I forget what his name was, honestly, and I'm too lazy to look it up, so I'll just call him the main guy that's not the, you know, the commander, the lead soldier that is not yet Mulan. So there you go. Uh, so we're at the camp scene and of course, uh, with no musicals, they kind of hit the instrumental version of the music, which, uh, okay, fine. Uh, the problem with this montage is that it's rushed as well, oddly enough. Uh, it's too short. Um, we see, uh, you know, the beginning, everyone's struggling, which is fine. And then the second one, they're already in the middle. And then there, I think there's like three cuts. There's like poor, good, or middling, and then good. I think there's one in between. If, I, I don't know. Ugh. Uh, but we see that Mulan is uh, obfuscating, taking a shower, because that would expose her at the time, uh, obviously, and that would be too soon. Uh, so she's taking watch. Uh, she's holding back who she was beforehand, uh, and her and the main guy uh, get into a scuffle. And this is actually where, you know, I will give the movie some credit, you know, where it's due. I thought the little fighting sequence between the two of them was okay. Um, I actually, again, wish it was a little bit longer. Um, okay, maybe not that fight in particular, because it, do, it would make sense to cut that scene short, as the commanding officers did come in and uh, block the fight and, you know, say, like, hey, no fighting. So, fair enough. They fought for, like, a good few seconds, and then they fight a second time, a more extended version of that fight, a second version, where they're fighting with the spears. And again, it's okay. It, I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but it's okay. Which, you know, for what I was expecting for a movie where, you know, you where I was expecting a little bit more grounded behavior and... Uh, when you, when I've seen so many excellent Chinese art martial arts movies in the past, I expected brilliant choreography, and I found the choreography to be okay at best. Um, so, 
again, I wouldn't say the fighting scenes are terrible, just okay. Which, again, I feel like for Milan is still highly missing the mark. Anyways, after their second fighting scene, Milan seems to expose her chi, but this seems to be a positive because she's still seen as male, which, by the way, I don't, you know, she has the, uh, the waist, the, the waist thing, uh, from the matchmaker, but other than that, her performance sounds female. That's one of the biggest issues I have, is there are a lot of scenes where she's talking, and she's not even trying to personify her voice or falsify her voice to sound like a male. She sounds like a female still, and a lot of the times when she's talking to the group, and... You know, at least in the original version, she's like, hey, guys, you know, she was trying to put on the deep voice and trying to do, and that lent to some of the other comedy that came from her in the camp. Uh, so that, that element is missing as well. Uh, so they got through that montage, and the Mongols are getting closer and closer, uh, so they decide to head out, obviously, and then they run, and they skip the next song, obviously, because there, no, there is no more musicals. Uh, they skip A Woman worth, worth Fighting For, which I don't mind that song being taken out at all. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, the, the big musical number is the training montage. It's probably the most well-remembered training montage in animated history I want to say or at least up there I will definitely say top three if anything uh, probably stick it up with Mulan up there the original version in terms of a montage animated and everyone you know uh, sees the full complete journey uh, and it feels right the pacing feels right all the way through Instead of feeling a little bit more awkward at times, uh, which is what this movie feels like at times. Uh, again, I wouldn't say the montage is awful, just awkward at most. But still, again, considering what I was expecting originally, uh, still underwhelming. So with that being said, uh, they head out, they see, they come across the corpses, uh, the burnt village. They sort of pass through. Um, the scene kind of ends pretty quickly. Uh, and they move on to where the Alps are, uh, where they meet with the Mongol army. So, uh, Mulan's little group, uh, they're lined up, her army is set, their army is set, and then they have this little Mongol group led by the leader kind of veer off, and then Mulan's group veer off to chase them. So, instead of following with the war efforts on this side, uh, we are following this much smaller group versus this much smaller group. And... I'm not gonna lie, this scene was okay. Again, not great, but I will say okay. Uh, you'll probably find that I'm gonna say that a bit more often as this movie review goes on. So they're chasing uh, the smaller group with their smaller group, and for what it's worth, I thought that the action, again, decent with the... Uh, incredible ability of the Mongols to like flip off their horse nearly and then flip around and then look like and shoot it looks like they actually did that or close to it if anything else uh, so props to that it looked pretty good um, and Mulan of course dodging she ends up being like the only one that makes it through um, and the Mongols end up going further up ahead. However, she ends up bumping into the witch. Uh, and again, this is where the witch confronts her about her identity. And this is where, again, the most interesting part of the movie happens. Where we're hearing more from her 
perspective, the witch character, how she uh, can see right through Mulan's disguise. She calls her a liar, says like, oh, you're, you know, you're blocking your true potential, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, the Mongols, being who they are and accurate to history, surprisingly, is like, oh, they recruited me because they saw the potential in my ability and they'll probably... You know, she probably didn't see it that they would throw her away after the fact, but, um, you know, that's the most accurate I felt like they were true, being true to the Mongol mentality at that point in the movie when she was talking about how the Mongols treated her. Um, so yeah, uh, she kind of fights Milan and she hits her with the, uh, this little uh, shuriken, I guess I'll call it. Uh, it hits her in the chest. She survives because she's wearing the armor. She's wearing the matchmaker thing over it. And the, that much overlay protected her. But apparently it was like, oh, but oh, also remember that that was also what was holding you back but keeping you alive. So, I don't know. Try to figure that one out. Um... I think what they were trying to do was do the cliche of like, oh, there was that tiny part of the body that was protected, only that tiny part of the body was in the chest and it just so happened to be the armor that let her identify as a male at that point in time, or falsify as a male at that point in time. And then she took off all the armor uh, and heads starts to head back. Now again... To this movie's actual credit, I you know I, I heard some other people complain about this part of the movie. I actually personally found no issue with it. With Milan heading up when she was heading up, she headed up with the uh, uh, helmets of other soldiers, and she placed them strategically among the ridge. Now, how she found that, sure you can complain that she just happened to see it automatically. Fine, that's a good complaint. Uh, but after the setup, she hits the, you know, starts arrowing them, um, and they have the catapult, their men do, the Mongols do, and they're the ones who cause the avalanche. Now, I actually don't have a problem with the Mongols causing the avalanche, uh, which is interesting, because the thing about the weapons that the original, um... The original animated one had, uh, I don't know, there's something always about those little rocket things that I was like, huh, where did they get those from, or did, was that made, you know, did that, was that, uh, you know, there's something about it that always felt a little off, I guess. So I get, you know, the whole, it was the Mongols' responsibility that they completely neglected to see what they were doing. I actually have no problem with that, honestly. So the Mongols cause the avalanche. The avalanche falls on them. Lon manages to outrun it, which, whatever. Uh, she has her horse, so, you know, she's able to still do that. She's looking for the people. She finds some of them. Uh, so, uh, obviously, this is the part of the movie where she is fully exposed as a female... And they give her the talk of like, oh, you deceived us, uh, you know, be gone. Uh, so they go uh, their separate ways. Uh, Mulan sees uh, the witch or remnants of the witch. Um, and I should also mention throughout the movie, <laughs> I completely neglected it because it's so insignificant to the movie is the replacement of Mushu is technically a phoenix that doesn't talk. It just sort of guides in a general direction. Um, again, I don't have a issue with the removal of Mushu, but, again, when you replace something, and I'm going to say it again, you have to add it with something of equal importance. And I feel like, you know, it being a phoenix, I don't have an issue with that, but have it do and say something, have it have a bit more of a personality, uh, make it a character even, dare I say. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's something to have it being silent as well. Um, 
you know, being a, more of a guide. It does feel more spiritual in nature. That's something I will actually say in the movie's favor. Um, it feels more like a guardian spirit rather than a talking guardian. So there's something that it feels a bit more closer to a more Chinese or even Japanese aesthetic is something being represented in more of in visual uh, storytelling than audio and speaking uh, storytelling. So I'm fine with the, I'm actually okay with it being non, a non-spoken spirit guide. Um, it's a bit of more of a cliche that way in another regard, but fine. Um, so yeah, she has that in its guiding hair from point to point, from time to time. Um, so yes, uh, eventually she separated, she runs into the witch again, which leads her to know that, uh, that the Mongol army has yet to be defeated and that they're secretly going in for the capital or whatever it was called, uh, the emperor. So she rushes back and she says, you know, she rushes back to the group, pleads, uh, to them to at least listen to her and she, she even says, oh, you can at least hear me out, but you can execute me. Um, and it's the lead character that is able to push everyone else in the direction of, I believe in Fa Mulan, everyone says it, all the soldiers do anyway first, and then that's what convinces the other uh, upper ups to be like, oh, fine, you can lead. Uh, so they let her lead. They head back to the capital, uh, where they find that the Mongol army has set a trap, and they go on ahead, they separate again from the main group, they, they go to find where the Emperor is, who has been kidnapped by the Mongol leader, um, and they proceed to fight through, uh, she, Fa Mulan, puts, you know, her trust in the, her fellow soldiers, they fight off the Mongols that are there, she leaps up ahead, uh, where we see the witch do her, you know, sudden shift, because Milan was, uh, when she revealed her armor, had one last talk with the uh, witch at some point. She was like, hey, you know, uh, I revealed who I was. You know, she she was trying to convince Milan at that point. Like, hey, you know, you revealed who you are. It went badly. Uh, give up. Turn to our side. Mongol mentality, etc., etc., that's all fine, actually. That was probably, honestly, when that that part of the movie was happening, that was actually probably my favorite part of the movie. Uh, because it was actually the most engaging. It was like, oh, okay. They're actually doing something that seems to stray from the path of the original, but then kind of just falls back into being the original at that point, after the fact. So, anyways, uh... Mulan ends up fighting her way back. Uh, she gets to the Mongol leader. Uh, they fight in the scaffolding, which is actually oddly enough also so shown in the trailers. The scaffolding area, but not the Mongol leader, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, so they fight, and the fight is okay. <laughs> um, they fight. The ending of the fight ends up in this little beam. Where they're up on the beam, the the guard, uh, the emperor's like in this little above this little platform, and below is like this lava pit. Uh, Milan ends up cutting the board off, uh, and it makes him fall. Um, and he tries to retrieve his arrow, shoots it. The the emperor catches it, uh, tosses it back up, and Milan like double jumps and uses her chi power to like double kick it downwards and the mongol tries re-re-catching it but he missed the angle um it went a little bit lower than he was expecting it to be and thus it caught him and he died uh and it actually shows a little bit of blood earlier on in the movie anyway so yay <laughs> i don't know um so yeah, uh, she saves the Emperor. The Emperor eventually does the thing. 
of like, you saved us, or saved me anyway. So after the fact, uh, Milan returns to her group, um, and she's eventually uh, summoned by the Emperor to fight as a official soldier in their army. She refuses, uh, saying that she wants to bring honor to her family once again, so she returns home to her pointless sister, her parents, and uh, mainly her father being the most uh, disagreeable of the sort at the time at the beginning of the movie, now realizes his error of his way, uh, and Juan is once again accepted into the family, and she is reintroduced with a second attempt at being in the army, as they bring her a new sword because her old sword was like tossed into the uh, pit of lava. So they present her with a new sword, the Emperor squad comes in, they present her a new sword. Uh, the narration that started in this movie, yes there is narration in this movie, which whatever, uh, also end caps the movie saying how Milan became a, her a heroine, then eventually became a legend. So that was Disney's live action Milan. And what did I think about it? Well, I think it stands within reason to say that there are a lot of times in the first half of the movie where, again, the movie is extremely rushed. And it's so unfortunate because if this movie was a little bit longer and kept expanding on those parts that made the original so strong, even with removing the musicals, I think that this movie actually could have worked rather successfully on an objective level. Just talking about what's in the movie, not any of the stuff outside of it. Just talking about what's in the movie. If they had focused more on the first half of the movie, allowed that pacing to really sink in, I think this movie could have actually been a lot more successful and then just counterweight the second half with a bit tighter action sequences. And actually, I think that's all really the movie needed to do, was add those two elements and Disney's live action Mulan without musical numbers and being not a comedy would have worked for me, honestly. Again, slower pacing, just building up the character a little bit more, letting us resonate who the character of Mulan is, and really building that up a lot more in the beginning, uh, which allows us to root for her later on in the second half of the movie, where, again, if you just let the action play out a little bit more rougher, have the choreography be a bit tighter, and that's it. That's all this movie really needed to do. Uh, to be successful, uh, again, as an objectively good movie. So I'm actually going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. And I say 5 out of 10, meaning that I feel like this movie is halfway complete. And I will say it leans a lot closer to a 4 than a 6, obviously, with the second half using that tighter choreography being withstanding, uh is why I would draw it closer to a 4 than a 6. And again, where that 5 comes from is also, again, with the lack of what, where the character, who the character is, what, what are her flaws, what, you know, what is her transition from, uh, the female, you know, this young girl who you see at the beginning and this warrior female we see at the end, what that transition actually looks like instead of it always being that's what she was at the beginning, and what the this movie tries to imply is that where her flaw comes in is at the middle of the movie, which is a odd choice and doesn't really work. It falls flat because of the way it was executed, and because it falls flat, it makes no sense as well. Um... You know, those two things happen to correlate uh, in this scenario, I should say. Um, and with that, I will give, again, Disney's live-action Mulan a 5 out of 10. Now, 
I don't, I, I don't think I've ever rated the original Disney's Mulan. Uh, I'd probably, on an objective scale, give it a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, you know, there are parts of that movie, again, that I don't really care for anymore. Uh, I think Mushu's character could have used a little bit of reworking, honestly, if I'm just being completely honest. Uh, you know, and let's face it, uh, he is the villain of the sequel of that movie, so take that for what it was worth. Uh, he became the villain of the second movie, uh, by all levels and accounts. Um, so yeah, I don't, again, combining those two elements, um, you know, I don't see, um, now, with the controversy in mind, I don't see them wanting to push for a Mulan, a live-action Mulan 2. Um, again, I don't know why they would do that either way, because they would probably fall for the same trap again uh, if, there's, if they were to follow the same mentality they did for this movie. The, sec the first half would likely be equally as rushed, and the second half would probably fall flat because of it. And, you know, because you didn't set up at the end of this first movie, Mulan and uh, the main male character even getting together, it doesn't make the, the second movie make any sense, because that's what the second movie pretty much focuses on, is their marriage and their relationship. Which, by the way, I actually really like that they even attempted to try to do that. The only reason I find that that movie falls flat is because of Gen Mushu. Uh, again, Mushu is the villain of that movie, and tr good luck trying to convince me otherwise, on an objective scale, that he is not the villain of that movie, because he totally is. Um... Yeah, Mulan's relationship with Shang in the second movie, I actually kind of enjoyed because for the early work that they did for that movie, it was one of the first times in a Disney movie where I was like, huh, they're actually focusing on building a relationship. Wow. Uh, that's pretty rare for a Disney movie to do. It's usually the love at first sight and then they're married. And then that's it. They don't usually build on the actual relationship. And Mulan 2 was like, oh, they're actually building on the relationship. Huh. But it was clustered by a whole bunch of other mess. And that's a story for another day. Anyways, enough rambling. Disney's Mulan, a 5 out of 10. Uh, in between movie. Uh, probably would, again, wait until you can see it. In other ways, uh, not Disney Plus, probably. Um, I think you probably still enjoy the original more. Uh, even, you know, even if I don't personally enjoy Mushu that much, I can still see why people would enjoy Mushu, at least in the first movie. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out the original Mulan. Most people have... You know, if you have any kids, make you know, let them watch the original at the very most. If you're gonna watch, make them watch a Mulan movie, let them watch the original. Uh, they'll enjoy the music a lot more, because it's there and it's very singable. And you'll see the character growth and you'll, you know, you'll probably be way more thankful for that. Anyways, that's enough rambling for this review. If you end up enjoying it, then please consider joining uh, by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Also, check out the links in the description. If you want to join to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Until next time, everyone. Bye bye.